Well, there are a lot of things I could say about our speaker this morning. Uh, the first I want to just say up front, he's just one of my good friends. Uh, he's also my pastor, and I, uh, I have never detected an ounce of difference between what it's like having a cup of coffee with him or cracking a joke uh, and what he's like when he's up preaching the Word of God in the church I attend. Uh, uh, Steve Jolly, I guess if there's a character in the Bible I uh, would identify him with, it was Nathaniel of whom the Lord said when he saw him, uh, this is an Israelite in whom there is nothing false. Uh, scripture says, blessed are those in whose spirit is no deceit. Now, now, Steve believes in original sin. His wife probably knows better than anyone how much deceit can be there, but I have never uh, seen an ounce of it. And he's, he's, what you see with Steve is what you get. And what you get is a man who uh, trusts in the Word of God, who teaches it faithfully, and just seems to always be having a good time while he's doing it. Uh, Steve, I'm so glad you're here. I love you. Uh, a lot of us know you, and uh, I'm eager to hear what God has given you. Let's welcome Steve Jolly, pastor of uh, Santa Barbara Community Church and friend of Westmont. Thank you, brother. That was a nice introduction. I just wish it could have been longer. That was great. Thank you for that. Hey, uh, I haven't been at Westmont a long time, and I just, I just got to say this, um, whenever I'm up here, uh, it is so great to be a college student, and for students, just enjoy it. This is just one of the greatest times of life. Uh, don't you wish college could last about 10 years? I, I do. I, you know, one day you're going to have to get a job, so man, this, this is great. Uh, as a pastor, I'm used to preaching a lot and teaching a lot, and uh, I'm not going to do that this morning. Uh, I know it's Friday. I know you're tired. I'm going to take a uh, simple approach. I'm just going to give you one verse from the mouth of Jesus. I'm going to ask you a question, a pretty simple question. I'm going to tell a couple of stories, and then I'm going to ask the question again. I have some pretty modest goals this morning. I'm going to paint with a broad brush. I'm going to generalize a bit, so uh, be gentle with me. Um, I'm going to do this, and I want you to cut me a little bit of slack. My talk this morning comes out of a concern that I have, something I've seen. In my experience, there's a lot of Christians that deeply love Jesus, that want to follow him, but are totally and completely unprepared to be a disciple in a broken and a fallen world. College students are often very idealistic, and uh, frankly, that's how it ought to be. Most of you are young, healthy, eager, ready to hit life, and you have hopes and dreams for what your life might be like. I was no different. What do you expect from your life? When I was your age, uh, I don't think I was naive. I think I was just untested as to the things of life. And here's a little bit of what I thought my life would be like, what I dreamed of, what I hoped for, that I would get married. And I did. I was 23. She was 18. Whoa, now, come on, no judgment there. It's a little early, but it worked. She was six weeks out of high school, and, um, oh, come on, I need some love here. Well, just so you know, that was 36 years ago, and um, it's been great. I hoped we'd have a few beautiful children who would be well-behaved, always love their parents, and even junior high, and Senior high would be a breeze, we'd get through it. And we did have two daughters. Not long after this, I felt a call to be a pastor from God, and I envisioned a church that would love me deeply, think all of my illustrations were good, my humor would always be laughed at. Yeah, you get the picture, I'm a bit needy. And they would have a great time in this vibrant, healthy body. The church would be filled with the Holy Spirit. Everyone would always get along and we'd never have any real problems. I envisioned that as I got older, I would, yeah, have a few very minor aches and pains, but that my physical and mental abilities would pretty much stay as they'd always been. I love surfing. I've been a committed surfer my whole life, and I pictured that as, even as I got into my 70s and 80s, I would still kind of have what it takes. I'd still charge. I could still get waves at Rincon. What a joke. And then I would go calmly to bed in the arms of my loving wife, 
fall asleep calmly, die, and wake up in the arms of Jesus. How do you think your life will go? What do you hope for? Hear the words of Jesus. This is your one verse for this morning. Jesus said at the end of his upper room discourse as he was preparing his followers for his departure, he said, I've told you these things, all that's gone before this, his speech and his talk to them, so that in me you would have peace. And he said, in the world, you'll have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Jesus promises his followers many, many things, and one of them is that we will have trouble in this world. Jesus was always a realist. He was never naive or Pollyannish. He knew that his followers would encounter problems, trouble, and they did. Being a Christian in the first century was not easy. There was social rejection, there was martyrdom, persecution, suffering, much like our world today. I said I would ask you one question. Again, I know it's Friday, I'm going to be easy on you. Here's the question. Do you have a faith in Jesus that will sustain you when trouble comes? I just heard a little bit ago that on Wednesday, Johnny Erickson was here, and uh, I didn't know that when I planned my remarks, but what I'm going to share in the next just few minutes is going to dovetail very, very nicely with, I think, what she shared. She certainly knows something about trouble, doesn't she? Jesus says, in the world, you will have trouble. In my experience, the trouble varies from person to person. It doesn't come to all of God's people in the same way, at the same time, or in the same intensity, but it does come. And the reason I want to ask this question this morning is I believe there is a persistent and subtle belief in American evangelicalism and the Christian circles that a lot of us run that quietly assumes that when you follow Jesus, your life will be fine. Everything will go well or at least pretty well. We use words like we're blessed, an abundant life. We quote psalms about God protecting us from harm, and yet Jesus says, in fact, he promises, in the world you will have what? Trouble. I've noticed that many Christians, young and old, seem quite unprepared when trouble comes. And when it does come, as Jesus promised, The results is often devastation to faith and trust in God and the Christian life. Oftentimes people have not fought through trouble, they've not prayed about trouble, they haven't studied what the scriptures say about trouble, and when trouble comes, their spiritual life is capsized. There's a lot of talk these days about disaster preparedness kits. You know, every every home is supposed to have one. I know that Westmont has a plan for disaster, that's a good thing. We're supposed to have one in my house, you know, you're supposed to get water and some food and batteries and a radio that works on batteries and you're supposed to have kind of all the basic things, a medical kit, you know, salsa and chips, everything you need to survive (laughs) in life so that when the earthquake or the flood comes, you're ready. What I'm asking you this morning is, what's in your spiritual disaster kit Do you have a faith that will sustain you when trouble comes? The problem is, unfortunately, most people don't think about trouble until it's right at their doorstep. And the earthquake comes or the flood comes and they run around the house saying, where's our disaster preparedness kit? Oh, we didn't get one together. And there's problems. And I want to encourage you to think ahead of time. At this season of your life, as college students, about what may come in your life. Well... Now, a few stories. I know you have your own stories, and you could probably fill in the blank, but let me just tell a couple of stories of what I've experienced. We'll start far away, then we'll come closer to home. 